I heard a rumor that someone needs to come back into the beauty community and fix it. I'm that bitch. <laughs> Boy, have you lost your mind? Hi friends, my name is Fire Extinguisher today because that's what this community needs. I am officially barging into the community, but not really because I don't know how to do makeup that well. Are you drinking your lemon water today? So I've done makeup for a little bit. You could say that I've dabbled in makeup. I too am a victim of consumerism and being influenced by a lot of people on Instagram and YouTube. But recently I've been trying more makeup and I've settled on a style, something that works for my face that is basically nothing I ever see on YouTube anymore. And I've asked you guys a couple times if you want a makeup tutorial. A lot of you want it, so I'm just gonna show you and I'm going to be honest, it's nothing special because there's not a lot to it. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in. We're gonna get uncomfortably close. First, let's address the fact that my face is clearer than it has been in the past. Oh. A lot of oil. So you can see that there's some scarring on both of my cheeks. The left cheek is a little bit worse, but like it's nothing to be annoyed about because everyone has scars and you guys shouldn't be ashamed about it. The reason why I talk about this is because no one ever shows someone this close. I get it, it's uncomfortable to be this close to a camera so you can see every crevice and pore, but I don't want you guys to think that everyone on YouTube has clear skin. It's all lighting. Also, yes, I'm matching everything today, even with my shirt, man. So the first step is having a good base and skincare is a big part of that because I believe that you should invest more in skincare than foundation concealer because you have clear enough skin, you can just spot conceal and not have to pack it on and I hate the way foundation feels on my face personally but everyone likes talking about primer and I got some primer it's a lot no one needs this much primer but some of it was given in PR this is the only one I bought for myself and I love this especially for people with oily skin this is Jackie Ina approved and the moment she said that it worked I instantly bought it and it works great in the summer except I love this so much that I'm trying to get rid of these before I go to my favorite but I've tried all these other ones out this one has SPF in it it's from NYX except I don't really like the chemicals inside of it it's not really reef friendly this one has fragrance in it this one is overpriced and you do not need a mattifying primer that just makes your skin worse in the end. But this one is pretty nice. It's a little expensive, but it feels good and I feel like it works. I'm not linking anything because I don't want to do the work. I'll just write out the names. I don't have any affiliate codes with them, so find it from another YouTuber. I haven't applied sunscreen in a little bit, so I'm just going to use the NYX one. It applies and feels exactly like sunscreen, but it is summertime and you all should be applying sunscreen no matter what. Unless you want skin cancer, that's fine. By all means, do what you want. And it would move my hair out of the way, but you know what? I'm a little lazy today. And this is a chemical sunscreen, which is why you see no white cast right now. And is it me or am I even shinier than before? Actually, I think it was the camera that's doing that. So my face is still very oily, as you can tell. So I'm going to powder it down because Jackie Ina tells me to. I also have too many powders. I'm just gonna say it cosmetics. Don't, don't worry about it. Just don't buy from them. These are the two ones I use, Glossier and 100% Pure. And I got the Glossier one in shade G5, G7. I don't know what was going on in my head, but go a shade lighter, please. Don't do this. And you can see it on my skin. So I like the powder. I wish I got a shade lighter, but if I'm on camera, you can't really tell. So I'm just gonna use it. I normally use my other one though. So I just take the brush that I also bought <laughs> For no reason. It was my first time at Glossy, of course I had to buy that. Do you see that? Not really my shade, is it? I'm taking off my bucket hat because it's getting hot in here. You can t clearly tell it's not my shade. So I'm gonna just go in with the other one because I don't want to be called out today. And I'm using a makeup applying tool that is no brand actually. I don't wonder why. But I'm not just gonna throw this away. I paid for it, so I'm going to use it. Don't get it twisted, please. But see how much better this looks than that other powder. The camera is also very deceiving. You can't tell if I'm far away, but we're close up today. So I need to be careful. If you think that powder is going to mess up your foundation, it won't unless you wipe your foundation like this. So I have two foundations. They're both unnamed because they came from samples at Sephora. I never really bought foundation, so I can't tell you what they are because it's made of six different foundations. And I just take my pinky. I'm only putting it where I have redness, where I have acne scarring, not over my face because it's never worked for me and yes I put foundation under my eyes too because I don't like having a bright under eye I don't care to buy a shade lighter just so I can get the illusion but I do care about how I blend I've tried brushes and this one from Amazon worked fine it's not revolutionary quality it's pretty soft though and it's the only brush I have 
but I like this one more. And I also have trouble foundation matching because naturally I'm a little more pinky, but my hands are more yellow, so it's just annoying. So I'm just gonna do this really quick. And don't look at the fingerprints. I just bought this from Forever 21. And please use a magnifying mirror just because you don't want someone clocking the, the patchiness right under your chin. It's happened to me. So it's not gonna happen again. So the title of this video, I don't know what I'm naming it, but I, in my head, it's already gonna be like, makeup routine to trick the boys into liking you. And I'm just gonna tell you, I hope you know that is a completely sarcastic title. You all know I am made of 51% sarcasm, 49% kombucha and or lemon water, but I'm about to go to Ulta Beauty and get curbside pickup with a mask on. So if you think I do makeup or the majority of people in the world do makeup, for other people or to trick men into liking them. You think we want to date in quarantine? At least for me. I do this only for me. I do it to have fun. It's the same reason I spend hours on skincare. It looks patchy on camera still, but I swear I'm looking at the mirror and it's fine. Why does it look patchy on camera? Well, maybe it's just because you're ugly. Freaking stupid ass, stupid. <laughs> you see why I don't do foundation? It just never works. You know, maybe it's cause that's not my shade anymore. I'm gonna use my other one now. I might've used the wrong shade cause I think I'm tanner than I am. Okay, you're gonna have to take my word for this. I'm not patchy in real life. I think this camera just picks up orange because for some reason my hand is orange too. Actually, if I'm up close, you can't really see the orange anymore. So for eyebrows, I already filled it in a little bit because my camera died. The level of unprofessionalism, far too much. But I just take a black shadow from this e.l.f. palette. I only have two palettes and both of them my friend gave me. Shout out to Lucy for being the person who got me addicted to makeup in the first place. And I don't really like eyeshadow. I'll explain why soon. So I just take any black shadow. I even have one from Maybelline from a long time ago. I'm excited to use this one because it's only black. And that's the only color I like. I take this angled brush from Amazon and just fill in my eyebrows. I never go outside of my actual eyebrow hairs and I don't really care too much for the, the Instagram eyebrow. I don't like how that looks. I prefer a little more natural. But Frederick, you already have eyebrows. I know for other people, this is not gonna work, but you clicked on my makeup tutorial. What did you think was gonna happen? And then I just take the spoolie, brush it out cause I'm a little paranoid. And do you see the difference now? I also don't put any eyeshadow in the front of my eye because you want to try to make it fade. Please don't make a block brow that we're past that. But maybe it's your style. Oh my God, I'm sweating again. I freaking hate summer. So that is the difference between this brow and this brow. I'm going to do half my eyes so you can see that there is a little bit of a difference. I try to keep it as minimal as possible because I'm not a fan of eyeshadow. So next up, I take this pink or orange and I also still look orange, even though trust me, I'm not, but because I like blush so much, I try to keep it monochromatic. So if I'm wearing an orange blush, I'll do orange eyeshadow, pink blush, pink eyeshadow. So just take a pink eyeshadow and no worries. Put it all over your lid. I don't really care about where it goes cause I'm just gonna fan it out all the way eventually. And notice how there's so much under here. And then the moment I look at you, Where'd it go? Where'd all that lid space go, Frederick? It's cause mono lids suck in terms of eyeshadow and I cannot figure out how it works and I'm too lazy to learn, so I give up. I like having my eyeshadow go all around my face and that looks so patchy. Give me one second. I promise you it is not as patchy as you think it is. If I zoom in, oh, never mind. Does it look patchy? Probably because I don't really know how to blend and I'm just gonna put my glasses over it anyways. Sometimes I like putting this right above my brow bone because people tell you to and I believe everything they say. Okay, that's the best it's gonna be. Sometimes if I'm feeling fancy, I will take the brown and put it right near where eyeliner goes in hopes that it will make my eyes look a little bit more sultry. Is that the word they use? Because once again, you can't see that I put brown there, but when I tilt back, and close my eyes, you can see it. And because I wanna get rid of this palette, I also take these two browns, which is slightly darker than my natural skin tone. And I mean, one, two, tap. Jackie Anna taught me this. I just put it down my nose, a little bit in my eyebrow, cause everyone loves making fun of Asians for having a flatter nose, even though it does not matter. Oh. One second. So if I'm farther away, you can see that there's a little bit of a difference compared to this and this side. Okay, I closed the blinds because I thought it was doing a lot. Finally, I take the liquid eyeshadow from Stila. I had a pack of three, so I gave two to my friends because I'm not going to use them ever. But I would like to use it up, and I have found that putting it right here. You know how people like inner corner? Same idea. A little bit messy at first, so you take a thin brush, push it where you want it to go. And I'm going to tell you, 
I really don't know if this looks stupid or not. I think anything looks fine if you put glasses on. So I just bring it out and I stop it around halfway through right there. And as you can see, it's pretty glittery. So I'm just gonna do the second half of my face. Is it even? <laughs> but if it's not, there. That's how I go about my eye looks. I care about this eye only. I just realized I didn't even fill in this brow and you couldn't tell. And I'm trying something new here. L let me know if it looks stupid or not. I bought these blue and yellow shadows and because I hate putting things above my eye and I only like the waterline more, I'm thinking about just putting it underneath. You know, it's like when a gay finally learns about makeup, he does that to be like edgy. I still like the look though. Trust me, I know it's not revolutionary. People have been doing things under the waterline for ages. I just put some pink under there because I thought it was a little bit naked because it was only glitter. And what happens when you put glasses on? Da 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 da, you don't know what's, you don't know. I don't really care about my eyes. I care about my eyebrows only. So the more I can distract you, the better. Let's talk about blush. I love blush. I really like pink, red, orange colors on my face. Not for foundation though. So I have three that I've tried out. Glossier and Dawn, 100% Pure in Strawberry, and Milk Lip and Cheek in Color Work. I use my birthday coupon. <laughs> you guys remember I talked about this a long time ago. I still have only used that much and I don't know how other people do it. It ends up patchy on me, so I use a very little amount. You may not believe it, but this is actually the same color as what's on my eye. It just doesn't pick up that way. So what I do is I just rub it on this thing and go to town. I typically put it back here towards like the edge of my face. I'm not trying to give the illusion of a rounder face. That's what you do when you put it right here. At least that's what people tell me and I've just always applied blush like this. I try to do it subtle. I don't want it to be like <laughs> clown. Don't be ashamed to put on more because blush does fade fast but this is just my makeup for going to the pickup delivery <laughs> i'm debating just not doing anything for my mouth because i'm wearing a mask but i'll do it oh how did i almost forget the nose if there's one thing i've learned is that blush in the center is cute Apparently we all like looking sick now and I'm into it. I'm just not into the the rubbing of this on your face. Shit. <laughs> Oops. I like it to be a little more subtle. Makeup that makes you go, ooh, but not ooh. ooh. So as you can see, it's not a lot of pigment. It's just subtle. And now we go to highlighter. I did not buy this. I took it from my friend. It's an e.l.f. baked highlighter. I've concluded I'll never run out of this. So it's my one and only highlighter. I would love to buy a cream highlighter, but I'm forcing myself to use this first. And I just take my hands and go, Nose, <laughs> nose bridge, other side. It doesn't look powdery for me. I think it's because I don't use a lot and just a little bit on my eyebrows right underneath. So that's basically my face. I don't really use powder to set it because I will only need that once I get oily. I'm not a fan of powdering after everything because one, it looks cakey. No matter what you tell me on YouTube, it's never worked for me even with oily skin. And credit to Robert Welsh, an actual professional makeup artist. Follow him on YouTube if you want actual tips. The reason why you prime and use powder before foundation is because you're trying to make a barrier between your oil and the makeup. You're trying to prevent oil from coming underneath your skin. So there is no logical reason to put powder here unless you're just trying to matte it. And I don't like the matte look. Finally, lip products. This is where all the problems come from. Because blush is so interchangeable, I can use these for lips, but I don't ever. You can already tell my lips are naturally tinted. The top lip is a little more tan just because that's what gets more sunlight and it's how lips work. So I will take some tint, some type of stain, whether it's a lip gloss that costs $1, some Korean tint that also is like $5 on Yes Style and a plumper that was $1 from New York. Don't buy it, be safe. Please read the ingredients before you use these. The only thing I'm doing is giving the illusion that I have more tinted lips because I think it looks cute. So it's a little bit of a Korean lip where you put it just in the center. I'm not gonna talk, I'm just gonna show you where it goes. I'm never putting it on the perimeter and just, there you go. That's it. And because I use so little, I'm never running out. So I don't know why I bought so many. Finally, lip gloss. I have two, the one from the dollar store and the one that is apparently very big on TikTok. My friend Lucy bought it for me and it smells like acetone because I just did my nail polish. So I can't tell you what it smells like. I just remembered it smelling a little bit like orange creamsicle. So I really like it. The dollar store one I use on camera. This one I use for real life because it has some shimmer in it. And because the dollar one, uh, is sticky. It's annoying to deal with. This one just no stickiness. It feels very nice and it's a little bit of a shine. So if we zoom out, 
This is my makeup. So for anyone who wants the less is more look, this is how I do it. It works for me. I don't know if it looks good, but I hope I look good. I'm never gonna be the person who does like cut creases. I mean, they're fun. They look amazing on other people, but not for me. Not for every day, cause I still hate the way makeup looks and feels on my skin after five hours, which is why I'm going to try a setting spray. Cause even then I still don't really trust them. Once again, not sponsored, no codes, no links. And if you want more things that are makeup related, go to the second channel. Cause this is the one time I'm gonna do it on this main channel. You get one look from me. Cause th this, is, this isn't changing. I hope you know that. There's no turning it up. This is the max. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, give it a like, leave a comment down below, be nice. I know I'm not that good at makeup. Subscribe for more videos every week. Turn on my notifications so you don't miss them. Social medias are all Frederick Chen YT. And as always, I love you guys and everything is less than three. See, why don't I look orange anymore? What is going on in here on this day? Bye. Time to go to Ulta Beauty. Even though I just said I wasn't gonna buy more eyeshadow. Just said.